Let's start off with a little history lesson to see why products like Datamere came into being. At the turn of the century, the volume of web data being collected by Google grew dramatically. The traditional way of storing and analyzing data on top of a single relational database server could not scale up at the same rate that web data was growing, so something needed to be done. Google solved this problem by creating a parallel distributed processing system, and they published papers about their breakthrough technology in 2003 and 2004. In 2005, a MapReduce clone was created for an open source web crawler. And the following year, an Apache project named Hadoop was started to create an ecosystem around Google's MapReduce and distributed file system. Hadoop was celebrated by data scientists because it handled the complex mechanical aspects of distributed programming, like managing servers, monitoring jobs, and reassigning failed tasks. And over the past 10 years, Hadoop has turned into a billion dollar industry. Hadoop's native programming language is Java, and many data analysts wanted higher level abstractions. So, several easier programming options were open sourced, like Apache Pig and Hive, which use SQL-like scripting that was more familiar to analysts. However, there was still a community of analysts that was adverse to programming, and they desired GUI applications instead of programmatic alternatives. This is where commercial software vendors like Datamere stepped in. Instead of using object-oriented or SQL programming, Datamere was an attempt to use a paradigm familiar to most analysts by using a spreadsheet-like interface. Next, I will talk about the infrastructure that a Datamere installation uses. It employs both the cluster architecture of a Hadoop system and the client-server architecture of web apps. My drawing on the right represents a Hadoop cluster made up of several racks, each with many servers. This server represents an edge node in the cluster where the server-side Datamere software runs. This laptop represents the client-side and the Datamere software runs in a web browser rather than on a thick client. And this storage volume represents the location of data that you wish to analyze. Datamere ships with connectors to over 60 different data sources, including many different file and database types that can reside locally, on networks, or even in the cloud. Like other data analysis software, the first step with Datamere is to load your required data into the platform. With the client app, you make a request to the Datamere server to ingest data into Hadoop, and HDFS chops up your massive data set into many blocks and distributes them across the nodes in the cluster. You then create a spreadsheet-like workbook to integrate, transform, and visualize your data. When you start the workbook process, the Datamere server sends you a small sample of your data source to work with interactively. After you're satisfied with the process you design using a sample, you ask the server to run your process on all of the data. It does this by translating your GUI instructions into Java MapReduce code and runs the code in parallel on the nodes that contain blocks of your data. This is Datamere's user interface, and our first step is going to be to upload a file. I'm going to use the file upload option. If I was copying data, massive data, from servers, I would use the import job. I'm going to select my file. And using this wizard-led interface, you can see that Datamere has brought my CSV file in. It knows the name of each column based on the heading, and it takes a guess at the data types. You can change these data types, and for instance, this cert field, I know it's an ID, so I'm going to change it to a string. And these closing date and update date fields are dates, so I will also uh, reformat them. Now I will save my file. And Datamere is now in the process of copying the data from my local drive into Hadoop. Now I will create a Datamere workbook, which is a lot like an Excel workbook in that it will have 
several sheets. I'm selecting three data sources and Datamir will load each data source as a separate sheet in the workbook. Now to get an idea of what's in each of my data sources, I can click this flip sheet button and I get automatically a graphic uh, picture of what's in each column. It shows a distribution, the number of records, the number of unique uh, cases, a minimum and a maximum and mean values. I want to integrate the data from all three of my sources together. So I'm going to click the Join Sheets button and I get this dialog box that allows me to select the keys to join the data. And I'm going to join it based on a state code that appears in each of the three sources. I click the Create Join Sheets button and I get my integrated data source. Now I can perform various transformations on my joined data. And to keep this video moving along, I'm going to uh, do a simple aggregation that I can use during the visualization process. So I want to uh, group data by a field in my join data. And now I want to do a group count based on that grouping. And let's get the top 20 by sorting in descending order and taking only the first 20. There we have it, an aggregated sheet. After we have done all of our transformations, it is time to save the workbook. And you can see here that our workbook is saved, but we have a question mark. That's because we've only worked with the sample of the data. So now we want to run the workbook across all the data in the cluster. Now that we have a workbook to work with, we can create an infographic that contains various charts. So this is a, a completely a drag and drop environment and we can set various aspects of our infographic. Here I'm changing the color and for my first chart I want to work with a map. And we will use data from our workbook and put it into the fields of this map. Now we can tweak the settings. and zoom in at the state level. And so you can see we've created our first visualization where each bubble on the US map indicates the number of failed banks and we can hover over to get a uh, exact count. I'm going to move this chart over and create a new one again by just simply dragging and dropping a widget. I'll make a donut chart here. So let's fill in the data. And then we will tweak the settings.
So now let's uh, see what this chart looks like here. We expand it, and we have ourselves a nice donut chart. I've dragged a bar chart onto my infographic and added titles to the other three. And when I switch into view mode, you can see my full infographic now.